Hey, everybody. Welcome to Swim University. Today, we're going to talk about the pool maintenance action plan. And the first thing before we get started is talk a little bit about Swim University. Why should you trust us? Uh, the voice that you're hearing right now, my name is Matt Giovanisi. I'm the founder of Swim University. I started it back in 2006. Uh, I had worked for pool companies since I was 13 years old. So we're, we're talking 20 plus years of pool care knowledge. And I've worked for stores. I've worked for service departments. And I built Swim University back into when I was 25, back in 2006, like I said. And Swim University is my, is my core business. And it is completely run by me. We are unbiased. We are an unbiased resource for all things pool care. We are not sponsored by anybody. We have no affiliations or no partnerships. We're completely doing this on our own, trying to help everybody take care of their pool better and save some money in the long run. So that is Swim University. It's just me and a very small team of people, and we keep the lights on uh, by selling you uh, products that are that are educational about pool care. This is one of those things, although this is free, and we're going to get into it. So we're talking about the pool maintenance action plan. This is the basics of pool maintenance, and I'm going to give you actionable tips to keep your pool clean and clear all day year long. And we're going to talk about the three C's of pool maintenance. This is something that I've come up with over the years. And there's three things. There's circulation, the most important part of pool care. Then we're going to talk about cleaning your pool. And then finally, pool chemistry, the water chemistry. If you can master these three areas of pool maintenance, you will have a crystal clear pool all the time and it's safe to swim in and everybody will be happy, including your friends and family. So let's just dive in, pun intended. We're going to start with circulation. So circulation is, like I said, the most important part of pool care. And there's a few things we're going to go over. So first, we're going to start with running your pump and filter system. Ideally, on a, if, if things were great and we all had a lot of money, I would, I would recommend that you run your filter 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the time. That's the best circulation. That's like your body. Your body's constantly circulating blood. Your pool should be constantly circulating water, but that's just not realistic. And so I recommend that in the summer or when it's hot that you run it 8 to 12 hours a day. Closer to 12 hours a day would be great. That's, that's, that's highly recommend it. And if it's colder, if you keep your pool open all year long, you can run it to about 4 to 6 hours a day. If you have a variable speed pump, you may be able to drop it to a lower speed and keep it running all the time and actually save yourself some money. So that'd be good. Also, if you run your filter system at night, you might save a little bit, well, a little bit of money because not everyone has their electricity on. And so you're actually saving some, some money there. But if you, I recommend hot summer day, 12 hours a day, and you can split that up six hours here, six hours there. And that's the recommendation there. So running your pump and filter system, the most important. Now we're going to talk about angling your jets. So you have jets that are in your pool that are pushing, you know, once the water goes through your skimmer basket, through your filter system, it gets pushed out through your jets. You might have step jets. You might have just one jet if you have an above ground pool. You may have multiple jets if you have an in ground pool. And what you're seeing is you want to angle some of the jets at about eight o'clock and the reason we do this is so that water can be pushed underneath to the bottom of the pool, and then that water will come back up, and then the other one, you know, if you have more than one jet, you want to keep it spinning in a clockwise motion. So if you have your skimmer that's right next to your return jet, your return jet should be facing away from your skimmer so that it creates a whirlpool and gets back into your skimmer. But I like to keep my jets at around 8, 8 o'clock, 7.30, 7 o'clock, you know, right kind of diagonal in that direction. So that's, it's pointing down and you can get that. And that'll help if you have any dead spots in your pool, there's, you know, you might have a corner or a crevice that just doesn't get a lot of water movement. It might help with that. And that's super important. Then we're going to talk about cleaning your skimmer and pump baskets. So your skimmer or multiple skimmers, if you have an in-ground pool gets filled with debris. If you check these every single day and just empty them out, that's just going to help the flow of water go through your filter system, and it's just going to make your circulation better. On top of that, you have a pump basket. You have a basket in your pump, and you want to make sure that that's also cleaned out. That won't be 
as filled with the debris as your skimmer baskets because your skimmer baskets are the first line of defense and then it moves into your pump. But you want to make sure that those are free and clear of debris so it helps the water get through your filter system. Now we're going to talk about filter maintenance because the filter is the heart of your pool and if it's clogged, well, you know what happens. So we're going to talk about a sand filter first. So if you have a sand filter, uh, great. One of my favorite filters are very easy to use and you want to make sure that you backwash it every once in a while because when it builds up with pressure, then it's clogged and it needs to be backwashed. It needs all the gunk that the filter has been collecting pushed out of the backwash port. And the way we do this is there's a pressure gauge on the top of your sand filter or on the side, depending on which one you have. And you want to make sure that right after you backwash, you take note on where your pressure lies. And the pressure is uh, pounds per square inch, which is PSI. And you want to see how many pounds it's operating at when it's clean. You might see it between 10 and 15 um, PSI. That's pretty normal. And if it's if it goes 10 pounds over that, well, that means your filter's clogged and you need to backwash it. So you want to backwash your sand filter. You won't do this very often because, you know, unlike your heart, the more clogged it gets, the more it helps to filter out things. So that's actually a good thing. But too much is too much. Then we're going to move on to a cartridge filter. There is no backwashing with a cartridge filter. What you do here is you, you actually take the cartridge out of the filter system and you rinse it down with a hose or you soak it overnight in a cleaning solution. Uh, this may not have to be done nearly as much as a sand filter, but just make sure that your cartridge is always cleaned. And if the, again, the, the pressure gauge here is your indication on when you have to do that. If you, you know, have a very clean cartridge filter and you're running at about 10 to 15 pounds per pressure, great. Once it reaches 20 to 25 pounds per pressure, it's time to shut off your filter system, take apart your cartridge filter and clean the cartridge inside or even replace it. And then finally, we're talking about a DE filter. These are the only three types of pool filters and a DE filter, very powerful at cleaning a pool, um, but it does need to be backwashed every once in a while. And when you backwash it, you need to replace the DE that you backwashed out of the pool. And DE stands for diatomaceous earth, which is a fine white powder. And you want to be very careful when you use this stuff because it is a carcinogen. So just wear a mask, wear some protective eye gear when you're dealing with this white, fine white powder. And the pressure gauge, again, that's your indication if you need to backwash or not. Um, like I said earlier, 10 pounds over pressure, over normal running pressure, it is time to backwash. So those are the three filters and how to keep them clean. Now we're going to talk about cleaning the actual pool itself. First, we're going to talk about skimming. Skimming is you have a leaf net, you have it attached to a pole, or maybe you're just using your hand. You want to skim the top of the pool every day. I know that may not be practical, but try. If you can do it every single day, great. And, and consider it a break from your day. You know, go outside. If it's nice out, just stand there, move the thing around. It's like a, I kind of think of it like a, you know, like a Chinese Zen, like a Zen garden. You know, you're just kind of moving it around and picking up all the debris and dumping it out. And that is going to help you so much because the debris that collects on top of the pool eventually ends up at the bottom of the pool. And then you have to vacuum it, which is much harder than just skimming the top. So if you can skim it every day, great. If you can do it every other day, every three days, that's fine. The more you do it, the healthier your pool is going to be. Then we're going to talk about brushing. Brushing is something a lot of people skip, but you got to brush your teeth. You got to brush your pool. So you take your brush, you put it on the telescopic pole, you replace the skimmer, and you want to brush the walls, the steps, the ladders, and you want to do this every day. If you're going to skim, you might as well brush too. If you have those hard to reach places, and you know how they say with teeth, if you have those hard to reach places in your pool where, where debris likes to collect, brush it out of there. So that way, at least it gets circulating and perhaps your filter can pick it up or your vacuum will pick it up. And you wanna do this every day, again, if it's not practical to do it every day, every other day, every three days, uh, but try to, again, the more often you do it, the cleaner your pool is gonna be in the long run. Uh, it'll just help with, um, if you, you, know, you won't have cloudy pool problems and algae problems if you just keep it clean. And then vacuuming. Vacuuming, I say you can do it once a week, or you can invest in an automatic pool cleaner, That'll do it for you all the time. So 
we have the regular manually vacuum your pool. Um, we do have, if you don't know how to do this, this is a video that we have in our course at the hot tub handbook. And it's also on our website. So you can check that out. Do this once a week, maybe more. If you, if you clean your, you know, if you skim and you brush all the time, you may not have to do this as often, but weekly should be good. I recommend that you invest in some sort of automatic pool cleaner, whether it's a pressure side, suction side, or a robotic pool cleaner, which is which I highly recommend. So that way, your pool's constantly being vacuumed by a robot instead of you. It's, it's totally worth the investment, I promise. Now we're going to move on to chemistry. Chemistry is the confusing one, but it doesn't have to be. First thing we want to do, test the water one to two times a week. That simple. You can use a home test kit. You can use test strips. You can take it to your local pool dealership, wherever you get your water tested. Make sure that your water is good to go. Do this often. The more often you do this, the better you'll stay on top of your water chemistry and you won't have problems with your pool. Those readings that you want to look out for is first, we're going to look at the pH and alkalinity. No matter what sanitizer you use, salt, chlorine, bromine, Bacquasil, minerals, whatever you use, everyone has to deal with pH and alkalinity, and this is the balance. You want to keep your pH between 7.2 and 7.6, and you want to keep your alkalinity between 100 and 150 parts per million. If you keep your pool balanced at all times within these ranges, you are doing 90% of the work here. If you have good balanced water, all the other chemicals will just work much, much better. And now it's time for the sanitizer. We're going to go over all of them, okay? The first one we're going to go over is chlorine. If you have a salt system, this applies to you too because salt systems are chlorine, um, and you want to keep your chlorine between one and three parts per million, more towards three parts per million if you can. Once that goes below three or one, your pool is not being sanitized. You are open for bacteria and algae growth and cloudy water. So if you just keep your chlorine at three parts per million all the time, which is much easier to do with a salt water pool, but if you have a chlorine pool and you have a chemical feeder like a, uh, like a chlorine puck dispenser, that's the way to go. Keep your chlorine in check at all times with balanced water. Man, you're going to be really good to go. If you have bromine, you want to keep that between three and five parts per million. If you use beguinine, which is similar, which is Bacquus, Bacquus, uh, Bacquusil, sorry, or soft swim, they come in different um, brand names, but beguinine should be between 30 and 50 parts per million. And then if you're using a mineral system, which uses chlorine as a backup. So mineral systems, nature two, uh, frog. These are, these are mineral systems, which I love, but you have to keep your chlorine at 0.5 parts per million. So that's less than one part per million. And that, that half a part per million that you keep of chlorine in there is a backup in case the minerals fail you for some reason, or you didn't change the cartridge, you know, that you were supposed to change. The chlorine will go, go in there and kill what it has to kill. And that's, that'll keep your pool safe. If you keep all of these in check, well, not all of these, depending on which one you have, you are going to be good to go. And then finally, we're going to talk about shocking. So shocking, you have to do this with a chlorine pool, salt, or just regular chlorine. Uh, you can do it with a bromine pool, definitely a mineral pool. Uh, but guanine, there are, they, you have your own version of shock there. But basically, you want to shock weekly. And you may hear people talk about shocking weekly or bi-weekly. The hotter the summer, the hotter the temperature out, shock weekly. It's kind of an insurance policy. You know, shocking is basically taking whatever sanitizer that you use and just putting a very concentrated amount in there, just wiping out everything, killing everything that's possibly in your, in your pool. That's what shock does. You do it weekly, you're, you're staying on top of it. If you want to do it bi-weekly, bi -weekly, that's fine too. Just if you're having, a, you know, you had all the other chemicals are on track, you look good, you're staying on top of it, sure, go bi-weekly, okay? Because that way it'll save, save you a little bit of money. But shocking your pool, 
super, super simple. And it's an insurance policy to make sure that you're not going to get bacteria and algae growth and cloudy water and all the problems that come with pool ownership. So those are the three C's of pool maintenance. Again, it's circulation, the most important part. If you have good pool circulation, then that's the first line of defense for everything because the filter system is there to filter the water to keep it clean. And then we're going to talk about cleaning, or we already talked about it. Cleaning is the, is the second one. You keep your pool clean, you skim, you brush, you vacuum. You, you know, you're not going to have a lot of, you, your sanitizer's not going to have to do that much, which is awesome. That's, that's going to save you money in the long run. And then finally, chemistry. Chemistry does not have to be difficult. It is very, very simple. But if you are still confused about any of these things and you want more in-depth knowledge, we have two products called the, the Pool Care Handbook and its companion video course. It is the easiest pool chemistry tutorial ever. It, it, we talk about the secrets of handling green and cloudy water. If you get green and cloudy water, you'll be able to take care of it instantly. You'll save a ton of money on chemicals because we teach lean pool care, which means just what you need, only what you need and nothing else. You'll know how to avoid being upsold. You'll know how you'll know what you need and don't need. And then we talk about hacks to keep your pool clear all year long. What we just talked about is not a hack, but we have more things that you can do to sort of automate your way through this. And then a real big one is how to open and close your pool. If you live in an area where you do open and close your pool, you're going to save a ton of money by doing it yourself. It's not that difficult. And we keep both the video course and the PDF, the pool care handbook, updated and available all the time. Always update it. So if you buy the pool care handbook and the video course, you get both. You get 31 video lessons that you can stream. They're instantly available. They're always up to date. And you, wherever you have an internet connection, you can watch these videos. If you have to go back, you know, you have to log in and go back to, to, to you know, to review a video that you may, maybe forgot about. You can go in and do that at any time. Once you own it, you own it forever. And then the Pool Care Handbook, which we also update, 300 plus pages. It's fully illustrated. It's always up to date. And you can download it to your computer, to your smartphone, to your tablet. You can take it out by the pool and use it as a reference guide if you have any issues. So that's it. If you want more information about it, go to swimuniversity.com slash pool dash care dash handbook. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was super helpful. Happy swimming.